the brother has asked the question uh, if he can marry a Jewish or the Christian or the Muslim can marry a Koreani and Ismaili and all that. Uh, okay. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. The criteria and the conditions and the requirement uh, to marry a non Muslim. Uh, it is he or she has to believe there is only one God and the one creator and none has the power except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the second step of the criteria is he or she has to believe uh, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the last messengers and last prophet so now in order to marry uh, when we say a Jewish Christian and uh, any other uh, sect of Islam other people and uh, so this comes falls into the same category and they have to believe that Allah is alone one creator and he is alone power and uh, there is no other God and there is no uh, what they worship other than one creator of the universe in Arabic we call it Allah and uh, and in English you can call it a God with a big G as in George and uh, the second thing we have to believe in all the messengers like let's say for an example if she is or he or she is a Jewish and uh, they believe Moses to be a prophet and they believe Moses peace be upon him to be the messenger like uh, they should not consider Moses as uh, he has uh, some type of a power but he or she has to believe he was only a messenger and does not have no power and uh, they believe in Moses Islam. but they should not believe on some priest because in the Jewish religion they are also a different sect in uh, Jewish religion like for an example they uh, believe and they rely now this is the point to be noted they rely on the priest now this is a shirk when they're relying on something other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that's shirk it's a similar to uh, an example uh, those Muslims who are going to uh, Mazar and uh, going to the graves and the shrines and the uh, walis of Allah and uh, they believe that they get some type of a shifa and they get some type of uh, seeking a help and their uh, requirements will be granted uh, through the person who's died in the uh, grave so regardless they consider them to be a muslim but they are not muslim now i'm going to be very clear to this point those people who goes to mazar shrine or the valleys who are dead going to them and asking them uh, to help us other than Allah that's shirk and that is not something a Muslim is supposed to be Muslim is supposed to be uh, he rely his life he rely everything on one God and that is in the earth and we have to believe he is alone creator and he is alone doer and we have to rely on him not someone who died in the grave like there's several uh, sect in uh, Pakistan India uh, Bangladesh and many other countries they believe someone passed away was uh, was a really blessed person and and through that person they're going to get a shifa now let me come to something a different topic also so you can understand who is more dearest to us in this world I'm sure all the Muslims will answer is the Prophet So if we ask that person if he the Prophet Sallallahu grave is the most blessed on the earth than any other Wali and any other one except the one our messenger that is Prophet Sallallahu his grave is the most blessed grave now who is the second person uh, you will understand and that would be our Sahaba whose graves are more blessed than the number one is the Prophet than the Sahaba these are the most blessed graves on the earth but if we go to uh, Medina 
uh, people are begging and people are crying, asking from the Prophet ﷺ. Now let me clear this. Asking from the Prophet ﷺ, Ya, uh, ya Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, help me with this. If calling someone with an intention to seeking a help, even it's a Prophet ﷺ, it's a shirk. Because the Prophet ﷺ was nothing but a human being and the messenger of Allah. We accept him to the Prophet and the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who came to us with the guidance with the Holy Quran which is the best miracle on the earth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he came to worship one God with the same message that started from the Adam salam up to the Prophet salam, with the same message to believe in one Allah, to rely on him as seeking a help from him now let's understand something we pray five times a day Fajr, Zohar, Asr, Maghrib and Isha and when we recite A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillah Rahman Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar Rahman Ar Rahim مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين Now those Muslims who are non-Arabic speaking they would not understand this words properly when we recite so many times a day إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين That means Oh Allah, I seek only help from you and you are the only one who is going to help me. Now those who go to Sharain, uh, Mazar and they are seeking help from the one who is woolly. Well, it can be or it cannot be that he was a blessed person. We don't know that. Let's say if he was a blessed person. But we come to the same point la ilaha illallah there is no god but allah and he is only doer so going to the shrine and asking for help and going to the mazar asking for help it's all shirk those people in india pakistan and bangladesh and i'm sure there are many many countries even in africa in several arab countries People have built their mazars in name of someone who was being very blessed person and going to his grave and asking uh, make a dua for us, help us. This is all shirk and the type of the person is not considered as a Muslim. The Muslim is the person who believe and they rely on one Allah. For an example, we have a scale from 1.0 to 100. We have to check our Akida how many percent are we Muslim if someone say I only rely on Allah and he is the alone doer and hundred percent and he is the only sustainer and hundred percent he is the only one who help will help me and he is the only one who give me Shifa that person is a Muslim now the some person who goes to the grave and he's making a two salah raka. No, this is such an illogical thing. He's going into the shrine, going to the mazar. He's starting his prayer by saying, and nothing about it. This is so funny. He's in the shrine and he's asking, is he talking to Allah or is he talking to the person who's dying in, in the diet? It's so Ill illogical because it's all because of an ignorance. Now, the shaitan is very smart. He knows his victims are the, the the person who who is a weak iman with a weak brain and who is an ignorant because the more knowledge do you have we adopt in our life and we understand okay this is the lie this is the truth and in order to be a muslim we just have to sacrifice everything for the sake of allah and alone we worship allah and we rely only on Allah, not the person on the dead and the shrines on the all that. And uh, basically in the Islamic countries, it, it is really uh, the responsibilities of a Muslim leader to demolish all the 
the graves and remove that because if we uh, look into the genital bucky even if you look at the genital bucky there are thousands of sahaba's graves there none of anyone any none anyone knows that uh, who is in the grave and who is that who is that who is that so the reason uh now if you look at the the saudi government in the, in the past centuries they have removed all the the names from the graves and they have uh, make it equal to the ground because the the government knew that if they put the names of the graves and they put the names and all that and the, definitely all the people of the world and today we have almost like a two million or more than that people goes to pre, um, to the hajj so for an example if two million people are going to the hajj and uh, definitely if the names were on the graves two million people uh, would gather on genital bucky and start asking from the sahabas oh sahaba please oh, oh yeah sahaba yeah name them and asking help from them so this would uh, become like more corruption to islam and definitely people would be uh, misguided uh, from the surat mustaqim so we understand that asking from anyone else is a shirk even it's a prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam even anyone it's a shirk so the, if someone says that i'm 100 percent rely on allah and i'm 100 uh, percent he is a soul doer but let's say some people they would say okay no there is allah one and i want allah people first of all many people are so ignorant they wouldn't understand when we say one allah they don't understand when we say there's a one creator they don't even know what we are talking about when we say there is a one creator that means our life and our all the sustenance our problems our issues we all put all this our headache on allah and we rely on him oh ya allah you are the only one who is a helper you allah you are the only one who is a helper and try to fix our deeds so our duas will be accepted so if someone it relies on 100 percent on allah he's a muslim because he's a purely his aqidah is pure and he knows there's a one creator and he's a creation so he has to rely on allah so he is a muslim so now coming to the person who goes to the shrine and still says allah is one and he, okay this type of person is also saying allah is one he also believes he's a creator he believes on everything but yet he going to the to the dead valley dead alia and going to the mazar going to the shrine and uh, these people is it, it are the victims of shaitan they do not understand the meaning of la ilaha illallah there is man there is no god but allah that does not only mean there's only creator of the universe that means la ilaha illallah that also means that our life totally 100 percent depend on allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now uh, many people try to justify this answer not the people who justify the answer are those people uh, who goes to the shrine goes to the mazar asking to the dead valleys and asking the duas and all that because if someone says that okay i go to the shrine i go to the mazar uh because i'm making a dua for an trust me this 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 is uh doesn't make no sense at all because you can make a dua from anywhere you can even sitting on one country and somebody died on other country you can make an intention ya allah i'm making an intention uh i'm making this sadaqa please send this reward to the person make a dua wherever you are you don't need to go to to the shrine and grave or anywhere because i'm gonna come back to the uh, back to the story where the uh uh, prophet noah salam there was like pious people died and how shaitan deceived uh their children they uh, the shaitan told them okay you make an image because it's gonna remember it's gonna make you remind of them okay now the next generation next generation next generation next generation now the entire next generation falls into the idol worship and those generations are mostly located in like an asian countries like in india um, like in uh, china and i'm sure there are many countries so all these generations who believe in idol worshiping some of the generations are out there so this is the similarly the shaitan that time played with them now the shaitan playing 
uh, to these people in in 21 century he is uh shaitan is like basically it's called like a devil whisper or shaitani waswasa uh shaitan is putting a waswasa in their heart and making them believe you are only going to shrine or the mazar just to make a dua that's okay you just going to the mazar you're just making a dua it is okay now the most of the people who justify the answer they have a one answer it is okay to go do this. It is okay to do this. It is okay. I'm not doing any sin. It is okay. I'm not, but they don't know the big disaster uh, hidden behind that for the generations that who's going to come and they're going to fall into uh, shirk. So th this type of Muslims are not 100% Muslim. They are part of a Muslim and they fall into the shirk and as a Muslim together like they're giving a chance to this uh, shaitan they're also giving chance to themselves to believe themselves that they are muslim but you, they are being called like a 50 percent muslim probably i don't know Allahu and uh, this is how uh shaitan uh misguide them so i'm gonna come back to the same uh question where the question was being asked if a muslim can marry a muslim uh to the non-muslim like jewish christian and anybody else well if we come to the same conditions in order to marry someone someone believes uh that there is only one god who is alone power who is alone sustainer alone uh doer for everything and there's no other power except the one allah he is a pure muslim and his aqidah is pure now coming to the sins that is something different when but, but when it comes to the aqidah if someone believes that allah is one and uh, he's a soul doer and the soul of uh, power of everything and his life uh, totally rely on Allah he's a Muslim now the second step is uh, he has to he or she has to believe the messenger وسلم, was the last messenger if someone believes that and he also believe and he or she also believes that the Muslim salam was the messenger of Allah and uh, David salam was the messenger of Allah and Jesus uh, peace be upon him was also messenger of Allah and he or she believes that the Muhammad وسلم, came at the last uh, who came like uh, more than 1400 years ago with the final revelation of God which was the Holy Quran someone believes in that he is the uh, he is a pure Muslim so now if someone believes that so if someone is born in a Jewish family and someone born in a Christian family or any family but someone uh, believes on this particular karma uh, he is a Muslim and yes you are allowed to marry but if someone contradict that uh, like ex uh, like uh, believing that if someone is a Christian if someone believes that uh, jesus peace be upon him have some type now those of uh, some of the people if, if someone believes to for an example like a jesus uh, peace be upon him to be a god and uh, believes him also as a son of a god and also believes in the muhammad وسلم, to be the last messenger so uh, that person is not a muslim because he's putting or he or she is putting everything together in a one basket so uh, he or she has to filter out like the Allah is one and the, uh, she, he or she has to filter out that the Jesus peace be upon him was a messenger of God and after that the last messenger who came after about like 600 years later was the Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who came after uh, uh, six or six like approximately 600 years after and he came with the final revelation was the uh with the quran so that person is a muslim so if you put everything together in a one basket that person is a uh, is a not muslim and there's a beautiful ayah in the holy quran in uh, uh surah baqarah verse number uh, 208 where allah says ya amanu like oh you who believe put yourself entirely into islam and do not give the chance to a shaitan to come to you and uh, try to remove you from uh, from the straight path that's like uh, 
put yourself into the Islam and stay on the straight path and do not contradict La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. So that particular person is being called Muslim. So those people who are going to shrine and the Mazar and uh, they consider them to be a uh, Muslim but they are still going to the grave and I have seen like a lot of people and they are also uh, while entering to the shrine they, they kiss the door and uh, they put their forehead on the ground as expecting that he was a blessed person and by doing that they will be able to uh, achieve what they are looking for and they're gonna go inside and make a two rakat salah and they're gonna ask the person who is dead and uh, it's going to be fulfilled this is the shirk and uh, this is a very clear answer in the quran this type of person will not be forgiven of, uh, by the allah so we have to follow the formula we do not want uh, to go into the things if allah will forgive or does not forgive so let's not satisfy our answer and then we have to follow uh, all the messengers came with the one answer and all up to the last messenger even the Quran gives the same answer that uh, doing a shirk is an unforgivable sin. So those people going to the Mazar and the Sharain, uh, they are Muslim but mixed with uh, other ingredient in there and uh, they are not a pure Muslim. They are like a mix of shirk and and the pure kid all mixed into the one basket they are considered as a 50 percent muslim but if someone like totally relying on someone that, that he is only shafi like the person who is being uh, dead in the grave that person is totally uh mushrik but someone who believes allah and also believes on someone who is helping them so they are putting allah astaghfirullah and billah, they are putting allah and um, the person dead together like he's a shafi his dua will be accepted and this is also so basically a kufr but not uh, not that believing on Allah we have to believe on Allah 100% we have to uh, rely on on his blessing that his blessing is above all our sins so we have to turn back and repent go back to Allah and ask for everything so uh, also the government leaders if they are Muslim they really they really have to remove all the graves from the country and bring it back because uh, when when the the ground of that particular country is being cleaned with the with the shirk so naturally the barka comes to that ground naturally so if we see in uh, when the shirk is ex expanding and the fahaj is expanding and the sins are expanding and the whole the root cause of that is a shirk and the shrines and all that that is like a, the nature does not uh, digest that the, the nature has to send some type of a disaster in the face of uh, leaders scholars and the sins are expanding people are getting away from the salati mustaqim they are leaving the quran so they are totally relying on the blessed people who being died away wallah wallah they were blessed or not who knows that who were there and uh, if you go to the pakistan in india you will find a lot of uh, shrines they are called uh, um, gadesha mazar and kama wali sarkar and it's like so strange and most ignorant people and i have seen a lot of people um, they have built the shrine so beautifully basically this is a business of those people who are running the shrine because if they do not do that they wouldn't be able to get an income from anywhere because they don't have a job they don't have anything so they would just uh, build up a shrine with wallahu alam who passed away in the grain wallahu alam there's something in there or something is not there maybe it could be an empty or it could be a dog it could be a cat or it could be anything i mean like it's a look at huge things i can talk about for an hour but the coming to the same point what is shirk and what is not shirk and the coming to this now i'm gonna go back to the question uh if a person if a muslim can marry a jewish christian and anyone else yes uh he can marry uh he or she can marry as long as if they believe allah is the one and they believe muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh to be the messenger of god and uh, they're going to be following only the the footsteps of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam nobody else is a muslim but if somebody just trying to put mix and everything together uh so he's not allowed to marry because that person is not considered as a shirk so it, it, it's like somebody's uh going to jahannam and uh, the person is going to jahannam he or she is going to drag somebody other muslim to go to jahannam so those people uh justify themselves by like like you know 
I pray five times, I give a zakah, and I do everything, and I'm a Muslim. Maybe he's justifying him in answer. So let's check our Akhida. We need to make sure our Akhida is pure. Who created it? One Allah. Who gives us Shifa? One Allah. Who sustain us? One Allah. Who solves our problems? One Allah. Who is helping us? One Allah. That's what we recite in every Salah. إِيَّاكَ نَعَبُدُ وَإِيَّاكَ نَصْفَيْنِ He is the alone doer of everything. We have to rely on one Allah. Not the Mazars, not the Shrine, they are nothing. Not even the messengers of Allah, they are nothing except the power of Allah. There is only one power, there is one Allah who is the creator of one earth, galaxies, all the planets and everything. So this makes very a good sense and this is a very logical answer that uh, this makes a very logical answer. Who, who created everything, how powerful is he? So why would do we have to uh, rely on Walid and yeah. someone? And someone who is, who is died in the grave, and uh, and the Prophet ﷺ clearly said, he cannot hear, he cannot do anything unless Allah wants to. But he's a dead body; his soul is not there. His soul is in uh, in a barzakh. So, wallahu alam, how does the barzakh look like? But but how does the Wallahu alam, how does the, the barzakh look like? But we do believe that there is a alam e barzakh which is like a, which is like a waiting period uh, for the Muslim until the judgment. And uh, that, place, that place is a peaceful place where the Muslim is going to be waiting until the final judgment on the day of uh, Qayyama. Everyone will be getting and coming out of the graves and they're going to be standing in before Allah and answering their days, what they did in the earth. So, so we have to put our, ourselves in our lives and everything we have to totally rely on Allah. So that was means la ilaha illallah and that person is a Muslim and someone who going to the grave and all uh, shrines in the wali and all are those who are blessed. Maybe they have a blessing or maybe they are just like uh, doing a business. Wallahu alam, we don't know that. But we have to rely on one Allah. There is a one doer, one soul power. We have to ask him, we have to beg him, we have to do everything. For an example, when we go to our job, when we go to job, we are so being uh, very good dressed up and uh, we talk to so nicely to the manager. We expect the manager to give us a job and uh, also when we get the job we are being very uh, strict about our times to make sure uh, we go on the time and we come out on the time and we worry about so many things because we start believing that our boss is a stainer then we forget that there's Allah who is being doing all that and he is the one uh, who planned for you so we have to rely on Allah. He's the one who's sustaining you, not that. Because even, even uh, if you look at the spider, spider is among those creatures who does not have uh, to leave the home. But the risk goes to the spider's home. He, the spider does not have to go. All he has to do is build a home and just wait for the risk to come. Subhanallah, who is doing that? Only Allah is only Allah doing that. So that means don't rely uh, on these things. Now I'm gonna give you a little bit an example. This uh, this was my own faith test, and only uh, Wallahu alam. This is the true story, and uh, this might inspire you. But we should not test Allah astaghfirullah. But we have to just rely on Him with the total faith, with total belief on Him. Like a long time ago, uh, when I used to uh, start my life into into the path of Allah, uh, I was sitting in the masjid and I was very alone. <clears throat> and uh, I made the two rakah salah. This was my first time when from common Muslim to uh, coming to building my taqwa, building my belief in Allah. I was sitting in a masjid. And, uh, Alhamdulillah, Wallahu alam, I'm going to tell that this is a really 100% story and I tested my faith and I'm going to give you more uh, miracles when we believe on Allah, not any wali, not anyone else except one Allah. 
I was sitting in the masjid and I was very hungry. I spent my whole day in there because I lost my work and I lost my business and everything. And I was sitting in the masjid and I don't know what to do. And uh, so I start talking to Allah in my heart. Ya Allah, forgive me, but uh, I want to see the miracle because it's going to make me help uh, to trusting you. And it will also help me to to make me happy that Allah is watching me and he's taking care of me and this is this was like unbelievable and I'm talking about this like almost 13 or 14 years ago when I started my life and I started getting attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I was sitting in the masjid and I'm not going to be naming that masjid and I'm going to be naming and no one but I was sitting in the masjid and I was alone and nobody was in the masjid except myself in the masjid and I was talking to Allah because I was depressed about uh, because of course the family members tell you to go find a job do something and I was the one who was in the masjid who was being uh, trying to build my taqwa and build my aqidah and build my trust in Allah so I was sitting there and I start talking to Allah in my heart and uh, I asked Allah that you are the sustainer so what if someone uh, he's not doing anything he is there and he is waiting uh, that Allah's help is gonna come to feed you uh, to deliver your risk on time now while i was talking this one i was sitting on the while i was sitting and i have totally remembered the whole video in my brain how things were happened alhamdulillah i have a good memory alhamdulillah by will of allah uh, so when i was sitting there after some like few minutes some stranger came into the masjid he was making his two rakasala and before he leave, before he was leaving he held my hand and he took me he said okay you know something there is a there's a, a opening of a restaurant and they are giving uh, a food and you're going to have a dinner with us let's go so i think he saw me like uh, like sitting there or something but anyway everything is planned by Allah so he came to me he dragged me to the restaurant and uh, I finished my dinner and, and I came back to masjid and I had a tears in my eyes and I was like subhanallah so I had a bit of uh, subhanallah I had a tears in my eyes and I was like subhanallah ya Allah and this really built up my faith how do you send the risk and somebody came to me and he took me to the restaurant and he said there's a free food going on and they're going to be uh, giving a dinner so I came back to the masjid and alhamdulillah I prayed and I had a lot of tears in my uh, in my eyes and that that has a really uh, build up my strong faith so basically my intention is to tell you that uh, not to believe on these people who passed away who are in a mazar or in a grave just rely on Allah keep asking him keep asking him do not stop Rem just wait for his blessing to come on the right time so i'm going to come back to the question where the, the person said if i can marry a non-muslim you cannot marry a non-muslim as long as the first thing the conditions to marry someone a uh, muslim yeah uh, he or she has to believe in one allah and uh, he has to believe muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was to be the last messenger of allah assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh